All right, good morning, and uh, welcome to Tip Off. This is an early edition. Hopefully, I'm not waking up the kids. I'm going to go grab them in a second, so I thought I'd just chat with you here for a moment because I didn't know when else I would uh, get a chance to do so this morning. Uh, yes, I'm still wearing my Giants shirt despite the loss, which means I slept in the shirt. So, okay, now you know more about me than you'll ever need to know. Uh, welcome to Tip Off edition number three. I'm going to touch on two questions that I got, just update you on a few things that are going on, and then uh, we'll move on with the day. We'll be with you for the Lakers tonight. Uh, as the Jazz get ready for that one, a little, a little nervous actually. I mean, Lakers are playing just 16 and one their last 17, and we're not playing well. So, almost in the years past, where you're trying to prove yourself, I almost feel like this one makes you a little bit nervous. Uh, you hope you don't get run out of the gym. A uh, few things for you. Uh, remember Facebook. Please add on uh, and like us at uh, Locked On Sports on Facebook. We we haven't had a lot of those, and we're kind of behind in that. And it's actually a pretty good community for everyone to hold conversations and. Uh, keep the Utah sports community and outside Utah. I appreciate all the people from the Philippines and Omaha, Nebraska, and all the people outside of Utah that have, that have mentioned that they uh, tune in and like this. So I, I appreciate that. I hadn't really thought about how we were able to uh, expand past the region like that, which is nice. Uh, few, I'm going to hit on two questions uh, that have been asked to me and then also some news. Let's update on the news on things. Uh, Ute coaching search, as we reported yesterday, the Ute circled back on Bennett, still tried to get him done. He finally officially told them no, so he's out uh, from everything that's going on there. Leah had that story, CSN Bay Area, and then we had the story that Ute circled back on that one. It leaves uh, Mark Godfried from Alabama, who's got some interesting ties. He, he won some games. He was 11 years at Alabama, um, was number one at one point when Majerus beat him. Uh, he, you know, he recruited some NBA players to Alabama. He's he, he's interesting. He's not he's not a wow, but he's interesting. And then Larry Kraskoviak, which true, I don't understand at all. Uh, so we'll see what happens. I, I would doubt it happens today because you kind of are supposed to keep your news out of the NCAA Final Four. So I think we're going to move into next week before you see a hire of any sort uh, and find out what's going on in that regard. As as I've been very clear on this, I still think that Tommy Connor should be a candidate. And the fact he's not getting an interview is, is somewhat outrageous. Uh, other news note last night, I thought it was really interesting that both the Lakers and the Celtics look great. And we're getting that point. It's April now. Happy April 1st. And the Lakers look fabulous last night. Uh, Dallas gets into this fisticuffs and pushing around and all of this. Matt Barnes probably going to get suspended today from all reports uh, and not play against the Jazz. And it, it really just, I thought, exemplified both teams. What jumps out to me is the Lakers are playing defense. Last year, the Lakers were a great defensive team all year, not a very good offensive team. When they got tired late in the year, they, they weren't able to beat you anymore offensively. This year, they've with their additions and some of the changes they've made, they've been great offensively all year, haven't been very good defensively. And now today they they're suddenly playing brilliant, brilliant defense. Their numbers over the last you know since All Star break are as good as anyone in the NBA is, and that's that's really the issue. They're playing defense as well as offense. They're the best team in the NBA right now. They come into the house tonight. It'll be a late start at 8:30. Uh, it's interesting. Also, the Spurs suddenly slipping. First losing streak for the Spurs since 96-97 of this magnitude. 96-97. Celtics' Rajon Rondo was back. They look better offensively. They've been defending all year, but they had stopped scoring for a while. So uh, it's just worth noting both the Lakers and the Spurs step up in the big moments. Uh, part of me still isn't entirely sure how somebody's beating the Miami Heat in four out of seven. But it will be an interesting playoff. Those two, Celtics and Heat, are now going to meet in the second round. Dallas and Lakers are going to end up meeting in the second round. Dallas just uh, culturally, I think, is broken. I just think that they look for excuses and they look for things to go wrong. I think it comes from their ownership. I think we saw that a little bit last night when things began to fray. All right, the two questions uh, that got sent to me, uh, Brian Joyce asked me a question about how long is this going to take for the Jazz? Well, I, I think it's going to be a little while. Um, you know, if, if really if the Jazz end up adding – a sixth pick and a twelfth pick of the draft, you know, four of your core players next year are going to be 21 or younger in all likelihood. Okay, well, when that's suddenly happening, it's going to take a, a, a while for these guys to really click in and understand. I mean, Kevin Durant is very, very special, and, and he lost, you know, an awful lot of games his first two years until he finally got it rolling, and you got to find a guy of Durant's ilk. I mean, I really like Derek Favors and think he could be very, very good, and I think Gordon Hayward is going to be an NBA starter. He'll start tonight, I think, and, and I, I'm assuming we can get one guy. You know, I think one of our two guys next year will probably be pretty good. I'm not certain both of them will be. I'm not certain that second pick in a, in a thin draft. It's not a bad draft, just a thin draft is going to be able to be a major piece, but you've got to find really, really special guys. Uh, really, you got to find one special guy and have him break through for you and lead the way the way Oklahoma City did with Durant. Otherwise, it's 
you know, it could be a while, it, and and you just are that young. You're going to lose games. You're going to pick up another draft pick or two the next year, and and suddenly then six of your pieces are under the age of 22, and 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 that's how this thing builds because you hope that four of those six click in or five of those six click in, and and you start to roll, but. Uh, you know, to get back to the top four in the West, which was, was Brian's question, uh, you know, Oklahoma City has done it about as quickly as anyone with one of the most special talents. And I think it, you know, really took them three to four years. And I, I'd be surprised if it takes us, if it doesn't take us that long as well. Now, the question is, can you sign some free agents along the way and do some other things to fill the gaps? But part of me just thinks, let's let's go through the process and, and struggle through those two or three years. But that's a hard business decision. Uh, the other question, I apologize, I can't find who sent it to me, but the basic question was, as an, as, since I'm an employee of the Utah Jazz, how should they believe anything that I ever tell them? I mean, that was it wasn't quite that. It was, what about bias and this and that, and you're Homer. And okay, there's no question I want the Jazz to win, but let me tell you, this question bothers me more than just about any question I ever get, because the implication inside the question is that I'm not honest or trustworthy or working honestly for you, and that drives me nuts. I mean, I think if anyone actually listens and follows my career and doesn't, frankly, buy into the marketing campaign of other radio stations whose ass were kicking, um, and, and I don't blame them. I'd be d Let me just say that. If I was program director at another radio station and losing the ratings battle to us, that's the only position you have. You don't have a team, so you claim you're telling the truth, and we're not. I, I, do, I would, you know, it's the same way in political campaigns. People send out campaign notices that are just totally untrue about the other people. Uh, so I have no problem with a campaign, but I would just ask you to be smarter than that. A and just look at my reporting. And, and tell me where you see these biases and where I'm hiding stories and where I'm not telling you the truth. It just doesn't exist. And it really, it's, it, you know, I'm trying to kind of laugh and smile about this if you're watching a video because I find it offensive. Um, the amount of time I put into this for someone to imply that I'm not giving you the truth and I'm not giving you uh, the honest scoop on things. Uh, to say I'm never negative, I'm the one who broke down, to f you know, just even recently, I'm the one who broke down how future the defense has been since December 30th. I just told you I think it's going to take three or four years for this thing to be rectified. Uh, on the day of the Darren Williams trade, I think I was the one who said, you know, I like the move. I think it's the right move, but I think the team might not be very good for a while. Uh, you know, I, I, in the Salt Lake Tribune article, I was quoted uh, by Scott Pierce, and basically I think this is the point. I, I, you're not going to get me to jump up and down and scream and yell and, and tell you people should be fired, and this is because I understand what's going on. I have access other people have, and some level to be doing the things that maybe a fan does where he screams and yells and goes nuts and wants everybody fired and hates everyone in this and that. There's a level of ignorance that you have to have. That's, it's, it's the classic ignorance is bliss. But I've got access where I know why decisions are made. I know why things are being done. I know uh, you know, where the origins of the conversations and, and things have taken place. And so therefore, I think... You know, I'm not flying off the handle the way you might want me to, I guess, is the only thing I can come up with. But there, if you just look at the track record is what I would tell you. I mean, I think I'm, I'm bluntly honest about what's going on. I give you insight that's unequaled. And I'm not, bi I'm not hiding stories from you or doing things of that nature. So, you know, I understand why it's addressed. I understand why it comes up. I understand that it's a marketing piece for other people. Um, I would just ask you to look at the facts. Um, and, and, I, and if you have examples you think of where I have skewed stories incorrectly toward you, please tell me. And uh, I don't think you'll see that that's the case. Uh, one other thing, one other question I got was about the Al Jefferson thing. I really, it's much to do about nothing. Um, you know, Al's mad. Al got benched. Tyrone took a stand, which I like to see a young coach doing and a new coach doing is learning. Uh, and Al didn't talk to the media, and Al, and Al needs to talk to the media. That's part of his job. That's part of his responsibility. I kind of always feel like you get a night or two off of that during the 82-game schedule, um, but you don't get three out of four nights off out of it. Um, Al's clearly frustrated. Uh, this season has not gone as he wanted, though he has played well, and I actually think that there's a good news to this because when Al came here, the question on Al was whether or not he was just a, a point filler and a, you know, a box score filler um, and really, at the time, he's an inefficient box score filler on a bad team. Now he's become an efficient box score filler, but he's at least bothered by the team. He's not playing well. So there's the latest for you. That's tip-off number three. I hope you're well. I hope you understood my uh, explanation of the questions that came in. Brian Joyce, thank you for the question. Feel free to send those to me on Facebook at Locked On Sports um, or on Twitter at Locked On Sports as well. This is the tip-off. We'll be talking to you tonight. Bowler Jack, Locke, and Gerard will start at the arena at 3 o'clock today for Lakers and Jazz. Oops, I forgot to stop the video. You got an extra like three seconds. Luckily, I didn't like pick my nose or something. <laughs>